What's good, people? You tune into the Business of Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Chris. And today, we got to get into this Joe Button situation, man. He's talking about Roy and Maul again, but it, this was in detail. It was, it, was, it was a pretty good clip. Let's check it out. All right. So let's, let's delve into um, uh, recently. Well, not recently, but you've had other shows on your network. And there was a lot of drama in between those situations. Can you break down by Joda's? No. Terminology, what happened? No. No. I can't. But is it part of your... There's, no, there's no one way to do things, Joe. Like, let's start there. That's right. what it is. And early in podcast land, I was like, all right, it's us at the top. I kind of get some, got some information that everyone is not privy to. Let me come back and share it. And let's do, let's move accordingly. Hey, this is what they're saying up there. They think, well, no, let's figure it out. Let's think tank, and this is what we'll do. The problem is everybody's got a plan. You got a plan, you got a plan, you got a plan. Everybody's plan might not coexist. This is new space, relatively new space. Okay, but niggas never come and say, hey, we just had creative differences. <laughs> No, nah, that's facts. I agree. I think that a lot of times when these breakups happen, and you know, it's funny, the same breakup that Joe Button experienced has happened with a lot of smaller podcasters too. Like I know personally, several podcasters who was like, you know, they launched the show and it was with their friend and things were going good. And then when it came to monetizing, it was, like, I want to go this way. I want to go this way. And now they start to feud. And it's, it's crazy how it happens because this happens on a small scale and a big scale. Um, so I think the only way to avoid those creative differences, like you said, is both sides in the beginning explaining what they want and what they care about. Like you got to have your long term vision set up from Jump Street. That way, if y'all not on the same page, it could be hashed out in the beginning or y'all could just go our separate ways early on because think about it this way let's say y'all put in the work on a show and after two years it blow up and it's doing really good and now you got an offer for a million dollars but the co-host you with don't want to spend a million they don't want that you know what i'm saying so you want to make sure that y'all on the same page while you're going to monetize and all that long term because when y'all break up you got to fight over the name all the old content um the ip like everything it just it becomes a big headache so i think joe could have uh, maybe avoid all of this but just figuring it out early on Mm. They say, oh, he's a piece of shit. He yeah, stole, he brought, he found it. That's what they say. So it's important to highlight these things. And it's low key annoying that whenever something happens with somebody like Joe Button, the first thing people go to is, oh, he's a scammer, he's a thief, and all of that. Like, we got to stop that, man. Like, if you don't have concrete evidence, I don't think you should be accusing somebody of being anything, let alone something like a scammer. Like, come on, man, that's hard to come back from. Everybody has a way to do things, and if you don't agree, then you could just not agree. The truth of the matter with uh, the old cast, what happened was gonna happen. That was gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Eventually. I had right. sent, as soon as that contract ran up, okay. the second that contract ran up, I was the one doing this. <laughs> they knew it, I knew it, we knew it. That's the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he sat with smoke. He said, uh, yeah, the writing was on the wall a year and a half. Joe said he want to put us on salary. I said, I'm never taking a salary. Well, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. This is over. <laughs> that's it. We have creative differences. It's not a beef. But your view of salary is different from mine. I rap my whole life. Never had a job, drop out. So I know that that rap money come. Well, for me anyway. And that rap money go. And it went a I lot I think that's more. for everybody. It went a lot more than it came for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, I got a, my brother Dill. Dill used to always assume I was up because I was a rapper. And he would say, yo, you don't understand the plight of normal people because you rap. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say to him, <laughs> everybody in the room. Sorry. That's funny because what people that are, I was, I call rappers entrepreneurs. Like, let's be real. I consider most rappers entrepreneurs because most of them not only rap, they have a bunch of other stuff in the business world that they want to do, especially now, which isn't a bad thing. But I think people who work nine to fives look at entrepreneurs and think you have so much freedom and your life is amazing. You don't have to work, all of this, blah, blah, blah. And 
on the surface, that's true. But at the same time, you have something I do not have consistent, reliable income. If you go to your job and you don't do any work and you slack off, they may not fire you the first time you do it, you know, the first month. Some people go years without putting in real work on their job and they still get paid consistently. As an entrepreneur, as a rapper, as an athlete, you don't get paid if you don't perform. If you don't show up, you don't get paid. Like if I own a business and I don't put in work and I'm not putting effort and I'm not consistent, I make no money. That's the difference, man. And a lot of people don't understand that. Because you don't. Right. Mm. I would die for your every week salary. Mm. If I could just rely on a check to pop up Friday, and every Friday it just comes because I went to work, oh, my God, I would be in love. I would love that. He never understood it, and I never understood Whether you did a good job what, or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I never understood what he was trying to say to me. But... Maul's perception of salary was that. It was bad. But if I come to you right now and say, hey, for the next year, you make $3 million. That's your salary. <laughs> Three, oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. $3 million? See, this is a part to me that I would love more information on. And I guess this is kind of getting into their business a little too much, a little too much pocket watching. But I would love to know what the salary was. Right. Like, I'm sorry, but if you're getting paid three million to be on a podcast and it was putting in work doing a live shows and all that. So it wasn't the regular. I'm going to just record in my living room podcast. Like it, it's a lot of work. I still don't think you can be mad at that. Like that's that's three million. You know, like the average podcaster isn't making good money. And then my next question tomorrow would be, how are you replacing that income? If you're going to turn this down to make, let's just say it was a million. Let's say it was half a million. If you're not going to take this half a million plus to do this podcast what else are you going to do to replace this i mean yeah you can go launch your own show but let's be honest now i split the audience up and you got to kind of start from scratch it's an uphill battle when i think if y'all keep it together and you keep going y'all could have broke records and did something legendary so i just i would love to ask those questions man i don't know if we'll ever get the full detail story because of how both of these gentlemen operate but man that'd be good tv or well, whatever that number is that you accept, but that's what a salary is. Right. It's whatever the number is, and that's what it is. His interpretation was, oh, a salary, nigga, never that. Suck my dick. Well, okay. We have creative differences. <laughs> right. There's nothing wrong with it. That tells me that when this contract is over, this will end. I told Rory, hey, the next iteration of this for me is doing this alone. <laughs> I don't have two more friends I could just pull out my ass. Thank God I had two more friends I could just pull out my ass. <laughs> but but when, I, when the signs started popping up, I was saying, all right, I got to figure out how to do it alone. These mm -hmm. niggas, I see people do Colin Coward does it alone. This guy does it alone. I got to watch mm -hmm. and start trying. I got to break this down. So you was already training yourself. And I respect Joe for making that kind of move mentally. Because what people don't know is when you record content solo and it's like long form content, that is very, very hard. Like it's it's very challenging. I've been podcasting solo for a minute, for like four or five years now. And it's such a difference. When you have somebody else, you can feed off their energy. You got the back and forth banter. They bring up stuff you weren't even thinking about. Like it's so many layers to it. When you're doing it solo, it's all on you to like show up and get it right and be on point. And that, that's hard, man. That's really difficult. So I, I respect Joe for having that kind of awareness, you know? Guess who else is man? You. Me too. <laughs> what we did with the anger was different. I didn't know that shit would look like that the way they didn't know. What I did, went to work. Love and hip hop. We bike. Mm. Pull up. We here. Hate talking to you niggas, but let's let's get to it. Let's get to talking to niggas. State of the culture. Puff. Revolt. We here. I'm outside. Right. Nobody outworks Joe. Mm. Fridays. State of the culture from six to four. I hired Parks with me. That's who Joe is. From four, we leaving through rush hour traffic to go do a pod. That's the work day. Complex, everyday struggle. We outside, let's work. <laughs> wow. It's work time now. 
It's not time for me to start looking around. And that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people get to looking around. But when you're looking around, your version is different from the guy that's going to get to work. And, and I'm so busy working, I don't know what's going on, what, what you looking so, around. So, in the, you so in the three, you're the moniker. You don't think that... I didn't hear you. In, in the three, you're the moniker. You're the one that they look at for the example. Now, with what you went through with everyday struggle, you don't think that that kind of like chimed in on them and they felt like what Joe was fighting for, we should fight for too? No. Well, I don't know. I can't speak for nobody else. Two different things. Man, I love that Joe ha- explains his perspective on that. Because I think that when it comes to that breakup in that whole situation, um, I think it could have been handled differently. It should have, obviously. But I do think it was bound to happen. Like he said, if I tell you I'm going to put you on salary, but you obviously getting a nice bag and you're not cool with that, it's not going to work long term. That's just the reality of it. You know, I'm I'm happy to see Roy and Ma out there doing their thing, but I'm also glad that Joe kind of addressed this and dealt with it so it can kind of be put to rest, man. But what do y'all think? Y'all think Joe Button is still a scammer? I know a lot of people have in their mind he's a scammer, he robbed Roy and Ma. So what do you think about Joe Button? 